Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the uniform distribution. You guys are going to see some formulas as well as some examples. So let's get started. Okay, so this slide is super important. So the uniform distribution function. The probability density function is f of x is equal to 1 over b minus a. That's going to come in handy. For x is between a and b. Okay, so that's our f of x. Formulas for the theoretical mean and standard deviation are given below. Deriving these formulas requires calculus, but we don't need to derive them in order to use them in this course. So the notation for the uniform distribution is x, so we call kind of a tilde, u, a, comma, b, where a is the left endpoint, b is the right endpoint. So it says right here where a equals the lowest value of x, and b equals the highest value of x. So everything that I'm underlining or boxing, these are really important things that you guys are going to need for later. So the probability that x is between c and d, or lowercase p, x between c and d, this is equal to f of x times d minus c, where d is the upper endpoint, c is the lower endpoint, and f of x is this 1 over b minus a. The mean, denoted by mu, is a plus b over 2, and the standard deviation is the square root of b minus a squared over 12. So all of these guys are going to come in handy. So we'll see some examples, and I'm going to reference this slide again. Be like, look, f of x is this thing. The notation is this thing. You know, how we find probability is this thing. So this slide is super important with all the information that you're going to need for the future examples. So bookmark this somehow, pause it, make sure you're writing down everything that I underlined or I boxed, because it's really important. Okay, and in case you did want to know where these formulas come from, so those of you guys who are in calculus right now, um, the e of x and v of x, this is your, let me go back one. So this guy here, the upper guy would be your formula for your mean, and the lower guy is the formula for standard deviation. Luckily, we are not going to make you guys derive them. Okay, so let's see an example of how this is used. So the data that follows are number of passengers on 35 different charter fishing boats. The sample mean is 7.9 and the sample standard deviation is 4.33. That's all well and good, but you might as well forget that. It doesn't really help us. The data fo follows a uniform distribution. Oh good, we can use all of our uniform distribution stuff that we just got on that last slide. Where all values between and including 0 and 14, oh look, a lower end point and an upper end point are equally likely. State the values of A and B, write the distribution in proper notation, and calculate the theoretical mean and standard deviation. So state the values of A and B. Well, A is going to equal 0, and B is going to equal 14. That's what we figured out from here and here. So the smallest thing your value can be is A. The largest thing your value can be is B. So we've got that. Write the distribution in proper notation. So let me just click back a slide or two, and this writing is going to stay, but just bear with it. So, so if we look at standard notation, and I'm going to underline it and then delete it. So the notation for the uniform distribution is here. So it's going to be x squiggly mark, or we call it the u a comma b. So we know what our a comma b is. Go back to what we want. Okay, so write the uniform distribution in proper notation. So that was u squiggly mark x a, which is 0, comma b, which is 14. Okay. And now the next thing, so this is what we have here, a is 0, b is 14, which is what we've got, x tilde u, oops, sorry guys, I screwed those up, so let me take that back. So we want x tilde u of a and b, so where a is 0, b is 14. 
So that's right here. So that right there is writing the distribution in proper notation. My bad, you guys. Okay, the mean. So next thing, we need the theoretical mean. So how do we find the theoretical mean? Well, A is 0, B is 14. The mean, which is right here. So the formula for mean is A plus B over 2. A is 0, B is 14 divided by 2. 0 plus 14 is 14 divided by 2 is 7. So the mean is 7. And the standard deviation, well, the formula for standard deviation is right here. It's the square root of B minus A squared over 12. Well, B is 14, A is 0. So let me put some intermediate steps in here. So this would be 14 minus 0, which is 14 squared. And all of that is divided by 12. And if you put this in the calculator, see 14 squared divided by 12. And then you take the square root of it. That is going to give you the 4.04 .04 that you're looking for. So that's how we found mean. It's from a formula. This is how we found standard deviation. It's also from a formula. So basically all we needed to do is we needed to figure out A and we needed to figure out B. And then what we needed is we needed to remember our formulas. So we needed to remember our distribution in proper form. We needed to remember our mean formula and we needed our standard deviation form formula. But then beyond that is basically just plug and pay and calculator and we're good from there. All right, let's see another one. Okay, a distribution is given as x tilde u 0 comma 20. Okay, good. So that's our a right there. That's our b. So we know a is 0. We know b is 20. What is the probability that x is between 2 and 18? And find the 90th percentile. Okay. So the notation for the uniform distribution is x tilde u a b. So u 0 comma 20 and we know that so to find this guy right here this is what we're focused on so to find that remember from the last video probability is area underneath the curve and the curve is going to be our f of x our f of x here is 1 divided by b minus a so what we are going to have is we're going to have f of x is equal to 1 over b minus a b is 20 a is 0 so that's 1 over 20. Okay, there's our f of x line. And the probability of the in-between stuff is f of x times d minus c. So pictorially, this is what's going on. So here's 1, 20, and we're going from 0 to 20. So this guy, I'm going to try to draw as straight as I can. So here's what our uniform distribution looks like. Again, it's a block. And so what we want to do is our problem says, okay, well, what's the probability that x falls between 2 and 18? Okay, well, what's the probability that x falls between 2 and 18? And you know what? I am going to change colors because I can and colors are fun. Oh, I don't want to. Okay. So here's 2. Here's 18. So what this question is asking us right here that I'm now going to underline in blue, what's the probability that x falls between 2 and 18? Well, remember from the last video, that is precisely what is the area of that rectangle. And that's what we're left to solve. So let's go back to pink. So the area of this rectangle is base times height. Well, the base is between 2 and 18, so the base is 18 minus 2, times the height, which is 1 over 20. So the area of this guy is 16 times 1 over 20, which is equivalent to 16 over 20. If you put 16 over 20 in a calculator, so I'll give you guys some time if you're following along. So if you do have a calculator out, go ahead and take that out. And we want 16 divided by 20. And as I'm waiting for you guys to catch up, hopefully you got 0.8. <laughs> so what's the probability that x falls between 2 and 18? Well, it's going to be 0.8 because 
here's our uniform distribution, 2, 18. We basically want to find the area of that rectangle. Area is the base times the height, which we multiply it out as 0.8. Okay, so this problem, check. Okay, so now we're going to find the 90th percentile. So the 90th percentile, so this was kind of our first problem. Our second problem is 90th percentile. How do we figure that out? Okay. Well, the 90th percentile is essentially, so let me redraw this. Here is our uniform distribution. That's 1 over 20. These guys go from 0 to 20. So what the uniform distribution, or sorry, not the uniform distribution, what the percentile thing is asking is where do I need to basically draw this marker such that the area that's filled in here is going to be equal to 0.9. So what does this endpoint need to be? And whenever we don't know something, we're going to give it a variable. So let's call it k. So at what point do I need to cut this block so that the area equals 0.9? That's what this is asking. That's what it means to ask for the 90th percentile. So if I want the area to equal 0.9, then I want the area to equal 0.9. And I want my base, which should be 20, or sorry, which should be k minus 0 times my height, which is 1 over 20. So k minus 0 is my base, right, from 0 to k. That has length k times my height, which is 1 over 20. So 0.9 is equal to k minus 0 is k times 1 over 20. And I could probably write a little better. So 0.9 equals k over 20. So I'm going to multiply both sides here, and this is just some simple algebra. Multiply both sides here by 20 to clear out the 20, and then we get uh, the k, in fact, that we are looking for. So if you multiply 0.9 by 20, what exactly do you get? Follow along with your calculator. Give you guys some time. Okay. So if you guys got k is equal to 18, you're good. So the 90th percentile is at 18. So notice in the previous question that we did, we were looking for the probability between 2 and 18, and we got 0.8. Well, if we would have done kind of the entire function from 0 to 18, we would have got 0.9. And that's exactly where find the 90th percentile. That's what it was asking us to do. How much of this area, in other words, what endpoint do I need to find such that the area equals 0.9? Okay, I think we might possibly have one more example. That could have been it. Let's see. So there we go. This is everything that we also just figured out. So f of x is 1 over b minus a, which is 1 over 20. That was the height of our graph. The um, probability, which is the area, which is 1 over 20, which is the height times the width, which is 18 minus 2, 16 over 20.8, which is what we figured out. 90th percentile equals 18. To find 90th percentile, we set the probability between A, in this example, of 0, and some unknown number to be 0.9. So they use D, I use a K. So probability between 0 and D is equal to F of X times D minus C. So 1 over 20 times D minus 0. Again, we used a K. So we got 0.9 is equal to K over 20. We times both sides by 20, and we got our mystery number was 18. So that's what we did. Okay, and that looks like that's everything. Um, so I hope you guys understand that. Please ask plenty of questions. Pause, rewind, whatever you need to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys learned something.